Dear ones, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for your love and support and for liking my content and subscribing to my channel. When we find ourselves in a relationship with a narcissist, we very often don't even know that they are a narcissist because they are so adept at hiding and masking who they truly are. They might present themselves as a person who cares deeply for us, who is highly protective of us and who loves and supports us like no other has ever seen to before. They seem to be supportive of our dreams. They appear to want the best for us in the way that they perhaps make suggestions for how to dress better, to perhaps even take care of ourselves better, and even to get rid of people in our lives who they convince us are not for our own highest and greatest good. In the beginning, they present themselves as someone who cares so much about us that we need to take breaks from friendships so that our relationship can be consolidated. They may go shopping with us under the guise that they're helping us to dress in a way that suits our body type best. They may even make suggestions for eating differently, for exercising with them so that we may become healthier. And before we know it, they are controlling how we dress. They're so possessive. They control who we interact with, perhaps even what job we do. And sometimes even insisting on accompanying us to job interviews, presenting as the most supportive partners we have ever had and in actual fact, conditioning us only to their needs. And we are completely duped by this because we find ourselves habituated to feel that they're only doing this for us to become the best versions of ourselves. And so we embrace all of these changes. We think that they're so involved in our lives and in the daily choices that we make because they really and truly care about us. And once we've completely and totally bought into this idea that they love us unconditionally, that they sincerely care about us in the deepest way, we find ourselves turning a blind eye to the constant conflict that they bring into our existence and into our world. And our world becomes smaller and smaller and solely lands up focusing around them only. We choose not to see that we are being groomed to please only them. And that so much of what we do is for them to control us. Because the reality is that they don't truly care about us. They only care about how we make them feel about themselves. We end up becoming who they want us to be. So concentrated on pleasing them because that reduces conflict, criticism, and which in turn cultivates feeling good enough because we're pleasing them. So before long, we found ourselves isolated from our friends and family because they've given us an ultimatum sometimes to choose between them and our friends and family. We find ourselves asking permission to purchase clothing we wear. We start only talking about subjects that interest them because our own opinions are no longer relevant. We find ourselves only interacting with people they feel comfortable around and are approved of by them. And we even found ourselves declining interaction with other people because they don't get on with those other people and making excuse excuses for their behavior to others because they only want an audience and they cannot interact with people who have their own opinions or who might see the world differently to how they see it and who might challenge them along the way. This process sometimes takes so long to evolve from the support of love we think we have to the place where we are so effaced that arguments take place where our presence may not really even be necessary anymore because they tell us what and how we think and we eventually find ourselves defending thoughts and actions that we never had or did in the first place. So what is a narcissist really? Well, in Greek mythology, Narcissus was a hunter who was known for his beauty. 
According to myths, he rejected all romantic advances, eventually falling in love with his own reflection in a pool of water, staring at it for the remainder of his life. After he died, in his place sprouted a flower bearing his name, the Narcissus. The character of Narcissus is the origin of the term narcissism, a fixation on the self. And this quality in turn contributes to the definition of a narcissistic personality disorder, which is actually a psychiatric condition marked by grandiosity and the excessive need for attention and admiration and an inability to empathize. This mental condition is one in which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. They need and seek too much attention and want people to admire them almost desperately. People with this disorder may lack the ability to understand or care about the feelings of any others. Narcissists are in truth deeply insecure people and they prey on people pleasers and empaths because they are easy targets to condition. Very often empaths who are those who have the ability to put themselves in the shoes of others and see the world from the perspective of others. And this is what makes them easy prey. Empaths and people pleasers feel sorry for narcissists, making excuses for their childhood insecurities, their personality issues, their unhealed life wounds, and think that perhaps if we accept the narcissist as they are, it will allow them to heal their wounds and finally attain their apogee. But in reality, that will never happen because narcissists wallow in their own self-pity. They blame everyone else for their inabilities, their incapability to see the world as it truly is and to heal themselves from their own stuff, but prefer to place blame on everyone else but themselves because they are not the successful people they wish they were. It's their parents' fault that they've not been provided with enough material things. It's their boss's fault that they have not been promoted or their colleagues' fault that their work is not completed on time. Anyone else but their own. They obsess about things like people cutting them off in traffic. They did it on purpose. They take it personally or parking in their parking space. And it is always the fault of, of others or life circumstances that they have not been recognized for their great talents and not become world renowned in their field of interest. And somehow, as people pleasers, we feel that it is our fault that they have not attained their success and that we need to be changed or we need to be different for the narcissist to remain happy. In these relationships, we find ourselves going from being the perfect love of their life to nothing is ever good enough. We will give everything and they will take it all and give us less and less and less in return. And we will end up depleted emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and even financially and get blamed for it all. Who would they blame for what is going on in their lives if they did not have us to make accountable for their choices, their own failings, their insecurities? They need us to validate their existence, as skewed as that seems, and will continue to hold us accountable for their lack of ability to see the reality of their world as it truly is. And dear ones, some of you are probably having light bulb moments right now. Others might be nodding and identifying with this behavior from a relationship you have actually managed to extricate yourself from or one that you have seen played out in front of you. Well, firstly, to those who have gotten out, congratulations. Congratulations on managing to get out. It's a Herculean task. Secondly, if you're hearing this and you have not left yet, love yourself enough to get out now before you lose yourself completely. Find your voice, find your heart, and start the journey of loving yourself unconditionally today, right now, because you, more than anyone else in this world, deserve your love. Some of you might have seen this in childhood experiences or in the observed relationship of friends and family. 
Some of you may even have observed this and actually told your friend or family member how toxic this situation is and advised them to get out. I have to say now, it is very, very hard to extricate oneself from relationships such as these. Even making every excuse under the sun for the narcissist and for their behavior, citing love and commitment or it's not that bad as the reason not to leave. Instead of facing the fear that comes with having been conditioned to not having one's own opinion, conditioned that one's existence does not matter without them and that fighting them to love yourself has erased who you are. Who you are without them validating your worth. Who are you really? Well, the reality is that the only worth you ever had to them was how you made them feel about themselves. Dear ones, the time is ripe to become who you really are who you truly are, the person you were meant to be before you were conditioned to serve others, before you were conditioned that your worth was solely based on how much you pleased other people. The time is now to love and approve of yourself unconditionally. You may have liked taking care of others because it seemed to heal the part of you that really needed someone to take care of you. Well, now is the time for you to take care of you in every single aspect of your being. And as we become more mature on our journey of self-love, we're able to acknowledge our own healing and we're able to embrace those who step into our sphere to bring us closer to wholeness. These are our teachers and they introduce us to powerful lessons whose purpose always truly benefits us in some way especially when we choose how we want to relate to others when we balance ourselves from within when we stay grounded in our desire for wholeness for unconditional self-love we see relationships in an entirely different light and then we can set the intentions for our own future relationships while there will always be a healing purpose, we are more aware of it and we are then conscious and a conscious part of the healing journey, fully aware of what we need. We then use this precious energy in focused and directed ways that use our relationships to bring us closer to wholeness. And at this point, we know that we will have the emotional fulfillment we crave as we provide that for ourselves and so we don't work so hard to create it in others. And then it comes to us effortlessly wrapped within beautiful relationships that give us the love, the honor, the commitment and the joy that we want without the drama and trauma of unmet expectations and the hard work of trying to meet somebody else's needs so that they will respond by meeting ours. I hope this resonates. Now, dear ones, let's have a look at our sweary affirmations for today. See what we have. Positive vibes only. Fuck negativity. Not loving myself is total bullshit and what are you waiting for get out there and fucking do it love yourself and now dear ones let's end off today's session with our beautiful deep breath where we draw in to our beautiful bodies into our beautiful souls all of the positive energy feel it as a warm glowing light and as we hold that breath we allow it to emanate out from us, to fill our being, to fill our entire bodies with this golden light. And then when we breathe out, breathe out all of the negativity as static, whether you choose to see it as sort of smoke or darkness, we breathe out like we're blowing up a balloon and become deep in ourselves. Right, let's do that, breathe in. Feel the golden light and hold it. Let it emanate, let it fill us, and I'll breathe out. Love you.
yourself unconditionally today.